So I have another little Jackson's haul. This time it is all pretty much, I think, sketch inks. So if you're not interested in sketch inks, then this may not be the video for you. <laughs> so let's take a look. So today we're going to take a look at these Rohr und Klingner sketch inks. So these are supposedly a really versatile ink that can go in fountain pens. You can use it in dip pen with dip pens and paint brushes and rollerball pens. I think even it's supposed to be a waterproof, light fast ink for sketching. Uh, so I bought six colors. Uh, one of them being this black one, which is Lottie. Uh, I think. The premise behind these inks is that they have nano pigment in it. So the nano pigment is supposed to be really, really tiny and it's not supposed to hinder the flow of your fountain pens. So that's what makes it so versatile. The bottle is a great value for money. I think it's 50 mils and they come in probably around 10 bucks. So that's a lot of ink for the, for the price, especially since you can use it with so many different applications. Uh, the bottle itself is nice and heavy. It's a glass bottle with a plastic lid and it has a nice wide opening. So this is great for being able to refill your fountain pens and use dip pens straight into this uh, vessel. So I love that idea. And I ordered six of these and they all shipped with no leakage problems or anything. They're really nice and watertight. Uh, I did notice some settling on the bottom of some of the colors. So for example, this one, uh, Frida, has a bunch of sediment of those nano particles on the bottom here. So I think these need to be gently sort of shaken. I may put in some agitator ball bearings in here, just some glass ones. You don't want to use uh, steel. You could probably use stainless steel, but I'm always worried that it's going to react with the ink. Uh, so I just have some glass ones that I'm going to put in here and just so I can agitate it and keep it going because pigment inks tend to settle out and they can form like a big rock in your <laughs> in your ink bottle. So it's good to keep those uh, mixed up. So let's just take a look at the colors. So again, first we have Lottie, which is a black ink and it's supposed to be a nice rich black ink, which is great for doing ink and wash. So you can sketch with this and it should be waterproof and then you're able to paint over it with your watercolors. Then we have this beautiful vibrant orangey color, which is Carmen. Looks like it might have some yellow undertones in there. So this will be great for sort of painting in colors. You could probably use the sketch ink and then use these other colors to fill in color. And then while it's still wet, you can move it around with water. And then we have Jules or Julie or Julie. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. This one is described as an aubergine color. So like an eggplant color, it does look a lot redder to me than I'm, I'm imagining as an aubergine. I would think that's more purple, but um, yeah, this looks like a beautiful color. Then we have Frida, which is this beautiful blue. It's described as a petrol. Uh, so it could be kind of like a Prussian, blue or indigo kind of color. So this is lovely. Then we have Emma, which is described as a khaki. This looks like it's leaning more towards green, like an olivey green rather than a brownish yellowy khaki. Uh, so we'll have to see what that looks like in the swatch. And then last but not least, we have Thea, which is a gray. And on the illustration on this bottle, she looks like it's a little bit brownish gray like a warm gray but I believe this is actually a cooler gray they do have another one called Lily which leans more towards the brownish greenish gray so I'm expecting this one to be more of a cooler gray just a quick little tip after using your brushes with this waterproof ink or like India ink as well it's good to uh, once you've cleaned them, just use a brush cleaner because the residue tends to stay in the brush even after you've cleaned it. So I just swipe a couple of times. I wet my brush. I swipe a couple of times in here to get it coated in the cleaner. 
dip it in the water just so it's a little wetter and then I'll kind of just massage this cleaner in to the bristles and as you can see it's I thought this brush was clean but <laughs> it isn't you can see that it is still sort of getting rid of the ink there Okay, and then once you've kind of massaged it a bit, you just gently rinse it in your water. And you should have a cleaner brush. All right, so here are all our Rohr and Klingner sketchings. Uh, I think they turned out really lovely. I did all of these on marker paper, which is really great for showing kind of the nuances in inks. I swatch all my inks on this paper and the campus uh, paper as well because it really shows if there's any shading which there is a little bit in here there's no sort of like the chromatography color breakouts or anything they tend to these ones tend to be sort of a single color here um, there is maybe a little bit of sheen on some of these this one has like a little bit of the red sheen uh, but you know nothing like for example diamine polar glow here <laughs> you can see that now that's sheen this marker paper would pick that up if it was present in the ink so there is just a little bit of sheen maybe on the black and the blue but nothing really noticeable and especially in the type there's none of it there so let's just go through and look at each one so this is Carmen it's turned out to be a beautiful really rich orangey yellow with some lovely shading uh, this is the Jules, Julie, Jules, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, and this turned out to be a really deep sort of muted uh, eggplant or aubergine leaning more towards the burgundy though rather than the purple. So that's really pretty. This is the Frida, which is sort of that, what is it, like a Prussian blue or indigo color. And I really love how the glass pen here was... Uh, running out of ink and it just looks diluted and that's such a pretty blue so that's going to be lovely to work with this one is emma which is the green which ended up being kind of like a mossy green nice rich mossy green this is the thea which is the gray and i would say it's more of a cool gray than a warm gray so more sort of blue undertones rather than those sort of greenish yellow ones and then this one is Lottie, which is the black, which turned out really saturated here in black. There's a little bit of shine on there, not as much as India ink, but there's definitely a little bit. And this marker paper actually uh, highlights that a bit too as well. So in the text here, it's a really rich, deep black. So I think if you wanted to use this in a fountain pen to sketch, then it would, it would stay really black. Um, it does dilute a little bit here and it leans kind of a little bit purple I would say but very subtle so a beautiful black there and then let's take a look at them on watercolor paper so this is them on watercolor paper I would say that they're a little deeper and darker uh, somewhat richer here and <laughs> these have been drying for like an hour and I really like, I put a ton in the top corner there. Like it, so it's, it's still kind of drying, but you can see you can get a really sort of heavy lay down of these and uh, the effects are really nice. It's, they're really lovely and vibrant on watercolor paper, which is nice. And I also did a couple of little mixes. So here we have sort of like a khaki yellow green, which is Carmen and Emma. So these two. And then we have this beautiful rusty brown orangey color, which is Carmen and Julie, or Jules. And then we have this gorgeous sort of foresty green here, which is Frida and Emma. And then this one is Julie and Frida, which is the purple and the blue. And that just turned out to be this gorgeous sort of lilac-y purple color. And the, the one with the glass pen just looks so pretty. So I'm excited to put that in a fountain pen and see how that writes. So I'm excited to try those out. Uh, yeah, so I think that is 
everything. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try and purchase the rest of the collection. So I think there's a really bright pink color and a kind of a muted brown green color and also a bright green. So a bright pink, bright, bright green, and then a brownish sepia green, brown in between these guys, I think. Yeah, so I think that's it for the Roten Klingner sketch inks. I had a really good time playing with these and I am going to ink up some of my cheaper fountain pens because this is a permanent ink. And I'll put all the links to these guys below. I've got them from Jackson's, but I know you can get them from other online retailers. So I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.